Well, good morning to you, and uh, I didn't see any cars rolling into the parking lot, the two-minute rush. I think we've already got our two-minute rush, and uh, we, um, well, just praise God that we're here, and uh, Chuck, did you, are you selling those? <laughs> I'll give you mine. Yeah, no, that's okay, yeah. You kind of distorted though. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, we have uh, some announcements, and then Shana is going to share. And before we sing or anything, we'll work all of this in. But the first thing I've got a thank you note from uh, Terry Titus, who is Matthew Titus's mother. Dear Faith Fellowship, I wanted to let you know your check for Matt, Sarah, and the family came last week. I've deposited it in a a transferred and, and transferred the money into their checking account. I've let Matt and Sarah know I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for the love and support you give to Matt, Sarah, and the kids. I know they are so grateful and feel so loved by all of you. And we feel so blessed knowing they have wonderful people like you all in their lives. We are hoping and praying we'll be able to go visit them in November. Right now, Prague isn't isn't allowing us to come. Wishing all of you a wonderful Thanksgiving and a blessed Christmas. God bless Terry Titus. And that is in response to, I have this in the bulletin again, that we, Faith Fellowship Church of Tennessee, Illinois, have sent $6,626 for Christmas gifts to our missionaries. And that's God working in our hearts and uh, bringing the generosity and uh, being the encouragement to these folks. Um, you see the things coming up in November, men's study. General election will be held here. I don't have that note in the bulletin again, but they will come the next day and do uh, sanitizing and, and more cleaning. They'll have the supplies here for that day. Also, I think if, if you vote here, I think you'd be very safe in doing that. That's what I'm planning on doing. Uh, board meeting coming up. And uh, is there anything else I need to bring our attention to? Okay, and uh, prayer requests. We want to uh, keep Wayne England in our prayers. And uh, he uh, was supposed to come home yesterday. They were hoping. I heard from Joyce yesterday morning, but not later in the day that he, he did. They, at, once, at one time, they were talking about coming to church today and uh, that's not no. This, he's not going to be up to that. I, they re, they did realize that though by yesterday morning. Um, other prayer requests uh, we could briefly share, bring before the Lord this morning. Uh, Jane rings or ring rings. Uh, has passed away, and this is your cousin's wife. Okay, remember that family. Yes. Okay, did he, did he, he passed away. 
Okay, well, we had, I knew the heart attack. I did not know. Okay. Larry, Larry, Larry Carson's family. Okay. Okay, okay. Well, uh, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day, as I usually do, maybe always do. Ask you to just collect our thoughts, uh, draw us before yourself, that we can worship you as we intend to, as we desire to this morning, to bow before you together, to let you, Holy Spirit, speak to us and to move and shape in our hearts and minds, to transform us by the renewing of our minds, to help us to know how true your promises are, how solid is the path that you've put under our feet, our rock, Jesus Christ. Lord, we do pray with, you'd be with the uh, Rings family and the Carson family. Uh, so many others, Lord, who are going through uh, difficult, many, many, millions, billions, struggling in our world, some near, some far. Uh, thank you that we can bring these requests before you. Again, we ask, Lord God, the Almighty, uh, we've come here this morning to, to worship and praise, to adore you. Help us to do those very things. In Jesus' name, amen. And we're very thankful that we have Shana with us, and you know her, so I'm going to let her come now and share with us. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's really good to be here. I always love being here, um, but somehow this year it even um, more of a blessing <laughs> to be able to be here in fellowship uh, with all of you. I just want to start out by thanking you very much for having me. Thank you for um, the time and thank you so much for your support and your prayers. And I want to start out by sharing a praise. Last time I was here, I shared how I had been praying and desiring to go back to Haiti for over a year, and because of the unrest that had been there, I hadn't been able to visit, and I was used to going up to three times a year, and so that was the longest I'd ever been here not returning to Haiti. And in March, I was able to go back, and God opened a door for just the right amount of time, and I was there for about a week and returned back right as everything was shutting down. And it was an example of God's perfect timing, um, one of the best examples I've experienced in my life. And I was able to, um, to bring a lot of the books that I had been collecting and preparing to bring down there. And in this picture, you can see some of the books of the first hundred words in French and English that they're gonna be using in the school. And so I was able to bring those down, and I was able to bring more of the gospel books, the Happy New Birthday books that we, Dee and I had worked to translate, um, and just some fun books that you can see Josiah and Jariah are working on. It's like how to make your own um, pizza, pizzeria <laughs> that they get to cut out and glue, and it was just fun for them to do that. And um, we were also able to hand out shoes. At the, the top picture is some of the people that received some of the shoes. We had had donations the summer before for these shoes that they're called the shoes that grow. And so the kids are going to be able to have these shoes that will grow with them. Somehow they expand. They have like these buttons and buckles that you can just open up and move and then it grows with them. It's pretty amazing. So we were pretty exciting that we were excited that we were able to get those and hand those some of those out as well. So that was a huge praise. Thank you so much for praying, and um, I'm really glad I was able to go. I just want to give you a brief update on what the Dorsays have been, what their ministry has looked like in the last year or two, actually. Um, like I said last time I was here, their ministry has been very difficult even for about two years because of the unrest in Haiti and the specific unrest and violence in their area. And so when COVID hit, it was kind of old hat for them to be in shutdown mode <laughs> because they'd already been in shutdown mode for other reasons. Um, and Haiti hasn't had to deal with a lot of the virus because they're, they don't have as much tourism as a lot of the other countries in the Caribbean. When the Dominican Republic 
had a lot of cases. They kicked everybody who wasn't a resident or citizen out, including the thousands of Haitians who work there. And so then when the Haitians came to Haiti from the Dominican Republic, they brought the virus with them. And then Haiti dealt with more of the virus. But the government was very quick in um, shutting, like closing everything and making people wear masks and stay distant. And so they haven't really had to deal with it much since then. Um, but that has caused a lot of frustration among the people who see the effects of it, like the economy suffering and um, still a lot of regulations, but they're not seeing the virus. And so they don't really believe that it exists, <laughs> which is making it very difficult for um, the ministries there to explain to the people why they're not able to do the same things that they were able to do for so long. Praise the Lord, though, school started back up. And that has been off and on since even summer of 2018. And so that's been a huge blessing. They're having it at the beach property right now. And that's what this picture is of one of the classes. And of the um, school, the number of kids attending is smaller because the area of Caries has diminished in population quite a bit. But there are kids coming and there are there our kindergarten class is the biggest class a lot of people who want their kids to be in school so that's been a huge answer to prayer um i would like to ask you all to pray for the church at nazon this is the picture of the church you may remember me talking about this church before they are the very first church that wickley planted in port-au-prince and they have had a lot of struggles um they lost a pastor due to a lightning strike that killed him about six years ago. And then just this past year, this pastor who Wickley ordained a few years ago, Pastor Dickens, um, passed away due to cancer. And so they've allowed a lot of the voices around them who are not believers to convince them that they're cursed and that they can't hold a pastor and that anytime they have a pastor, he's probably going to die. And so just please pray for them that they would be encouraged and that they would hear truth. Uh, Wickley and Pastor Kenne have been there preaching and every, almost every Sunday trying to go and encourage the people, which sometimes can be a little dangerous traveling in and out of Port-au-Prince. So pray for safety for Wickley and Pastor Kenne as they go there and try to encourage the people as well. Um, I'd like to give you a couple of verses that I've been using this year to pray for the Dorseys and their ministry. Um, one of the ways that they ask for prayer and one of the ways I've really been felt led to pray for them is clarity and wisdom and decisions, especially right now, um, financial decisions and um, decisions about the ministry in general. So this verse is from Isaiah and I'm going to read a part of the rest of the passage as well. It says, Therefore the Lord waits to be gracious to you, and he exalts himself to show mercy to you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all those who wait for him. For a people shall dwell in Zion, in Jerusalem you shall weep no more. He will surely be gracious to you at the sound of your cry. As soon as he hears it, he answers you. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teacher will not hide himself any more, but your eyes shall see your teacher, and your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it, when you turn to the right or when you turn to the left. So um, if you aren't sure how to pray for them, those verses are some that have really guide, um, been guiding me in my prayers for them, just to, that they would hear their, the teacher and they would hear his voice and know which way is the right way to walk as far as they are concerned and their family and their ministry. And then this final one is in Jeremiah. That is a book that I've really been studying or trying to study and be in lately. Um, and this is talking about using our words wisely and truly, speaking truth. Um, and I just ask you to pray that they would speak the gospel clearly and um, speak, be able to speak truth, allow God to speak truth through them to the churches because they're hearing so many, as we are, so many voices mm -hmm. um, speaking untruths. And um, it's really easy to listen to the voices that are the loudest rather than the voices that are the truthful ones. And so this verse, use words truly and well, 
Um, don't stoop to cheap whining then, but only then you'll speak for me. Let your words change them. Don't change your words to suit them. Um, I just would ask that you would pray for them and for the ministry um, that they would be following those, um, those commands. Oh, I guess that was my last picture. So I just want to thank you very much for your faithfulness and um, your support in financially, but especially in prayer. And I want to thank you also personally for the Christmas gifts that you guys send out every year that always comes um, as such a blessing and, and um, just at just the right time. And so thank you so much for your love and support and faithfulness. Well, thank you very much, Shana. Blessing to have you here. And there are on the back of your bulletin, I took it from the latest uh, newsletter. You'll see here under Shana, Service with Blessing Hearts. You'll see prayer requests uh, and some other things there, ways to contact her, ways to uh, contribute. Now, you can look in your bulletin for the words, or you can turn to uh, whatever page it says that is. We are going to sing... When morning gilds the skies, also known as May Jesus Christ Be Praised. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, 3. We're going to do a chord change, and then we are going to sing verse 4. Yes, you may, would you stand, please? the skies my heart awaking cries may Jesus Christ be praised alike at work and prayer to Jesus I repair may Jesus Christ be The night becomes as day When from the heart we say May Jesus Christ The powers of darkness fear When this sweet song they hear May Jesus Christ be praised ye nations of mankind in this your concord find may Jesus Christ be praised let all the earth around ring joyous with the sound may Jesus Christ be praised. Be this while life is mine, my canticle divine. May Jesus Christ be praised. Be this the eternal song through all long. May Jesus Christ be praised.
I want to uh, bring our attention to before we pray and preach. Um, again, keep Wayne in our prayers, Wayne England, but also Wayne White is not doing very well. And so uh, we want to keep him in our prayers. And uh, I had a really good visit with Lyle and Lana. Lana was doing very well. And so that's good, but there's, there's many. And uh, we had a good uh, internment service. Uh, quite a few people showed up for that. Uh, that was a real, real blessing, I'm sure, to uh, Janice uh, for Tip's internment yesterday. Oh, yes. Okay, pray she, for... She has several children. <laughs> yeah, pray for Debbie's daughter, Hannah, uh, for COVID, so with uh, COVID, yes. Well, let's pray again. Lord, we would want to first bring these uh, petitions before you, the continued uh, strengthening and healing for Wayne England. We bring Wayne White before you, uh, Lyle and Lana, and others, Lord, uh, just... Uh, this, this, everything about this uh, COVID-19, the, the threat of it, the, the discouragement of it, we, we bring our fellowship before you. We bring Hannah, has been tested positive for this, and uh, we, we pray for her physical healing, but we also pray for what she needs most, Lord, like uh, so many of those who we love dearly. They need you. They need to believe in Jesus Christ. Uh, they need to receive the gift of eternal life. Now, Holy Spirit of God, help us to um, help us to take a breath. Um, I would ask for myself to calm my mind, slow my heart, help me to speak the things that you would have me to. You tell us if we speak, if we preach it, it would be the oracles of God, a very weighty responsibility as the vessel to communicate your words. Help me to do that this morning. Help us all to receive these words. We do thank you again for this time. Uh, reign supreme in our hearts now in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> I wear glasses. You might, you probably have noticed that. I wear glasses because I suffer from refractive errors. My eyes because of the shape of my eyes, they don't bend or focus the light correctly, resulting in blurred vision. So I wear glasses. The lenses in these glasses cause my eyes to correctly refract, to correctly focus the incoming light so that I can see clearly. In the spiritual realm, we all suffer. We all suffer from refractive errors. So when we study our Bibles, we need glasses with the proper lenses that correct the focus or the bend of the incoming light of God's Word. To understand and interpret Scripture with the clarity it deserves, we need to view it through the lens of the character and nature of God. So when we read and study our Bibles, we read and study with the goodness and holiness and love and justice of God in mind. We read and we study with his sovereignty and compassion and his infinite wisdom in mind, his all-knowing, his ever-presence, the many, many things, the attributes of God, the nature and character of God in our minds as we read and study his word. Not only do these amazing lenses allow us to see clearly, but they also cleanse our hearts and minds of lower earth thinking and human opinions that have bent the light in the wrong direction and blurred our vision. We hear, as Shana has mentioned, the, the outside voices are louder than the voice of God. When we approach the Word of God through these lenses, the Holy Spirit of God brings health to our eyes and purifies our minds of the contaminants of this world, 
the traditions and the speculations that have built up and layered on over the years. For comparison, imagine if someone came up with a contact lens that not only improved your sight, but healed your eyes as it improved your sight. That's what these lenses do, these spiritual lenses. The corrective lens that I would like to bring our attention to this morning is the clarifying, cleansing, light bending lens of the blessing of God. Our text this morning, first three verses of Revelation 1, I'm going to read in the New Living Translation. This is a revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants the events that must soon take place. He sent an angel to present this, to present this revelation to his servant John, who faithfully reported everything he saw. This is the report of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. God blesses the one who reads the words of this prophecy to the church, and he blesses all who listen to its message and obey what it says, for the time is near. Did you know, did you know that God planned to bless his human creation before he even created this earth? Scripture speaks of it as before the foundation of the world. Now, if you're following in your notes, you're at the beginning of your notes now. Ephesians 1, 3, and I'm going to read all four of these verses because as God's word should be to us, it should be astounding and amazing and just set us back and call us, call our attention before him, quiet us, stop our minds to hear the voice of God. God planned to bless his human creation before he even formed this earth. Ephesians 1, 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now hang on to your seats, okay? Who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined, predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. Amazing, astounding. God blessed the living creatures at creation, Genesis 1.22. He blessed those he made in his image, his human creation, at the very beginning of creation, Genesis 1.28. I've got these verses listed. I'm not going to read them all. I wanted you to have that, though. You can go back and read these verses in the greater context, though. Move on through Scripture and find Moses setting the choice of blessing and cursing before the children of Israel. Genesis 30, verse 20. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day, against you today, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Later in the history of God's chosen people, we see in Jeremiah, God has not changed his approach. Jeremiah 21, 8, And to this people you shall say, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. Fast forward to a later time in the New Testament. You can see Jesus the Sermon of the Mount, he's on the Mount of Olives and he finds a seat and the people are below him and he teaches the way of blessing, the pathway of the Lord. Matt, this is from Matthew 5, 1 to 11. Uh, seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain and when he sat down, his disciples came to him and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn, blessed are the meek, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful, blessed are the pure in heart. 
Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. God promised through Abraham all the nations of the earth would be blessed through him. Galatians 3.8, And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. But not everyone. Not everyone will be blessed by God, as many will choose their own way. If you remember when we studied humility, those in pride choose their own way. Those in humility receive the way of God. Many will choose their own way and refuse the path of the Lord. Earl Palmer and uh, Lloyd Ogilvy in their commentary, they give us this very helpful commenta commentary on the meaning of the word blessed in the, in the New Testament. It's mak makarias. And um, they say that um, it's, uh, but they speak of it in, in helping us find further meaning as finding the right pathway Here's what they say. You have this in your notes too. Blessed in the Greek means simply happy. But the Hebrew word from the Old Testament, which lies behind this word in John's mind, is probably the word asher, or I've added, or esher. And its meaning is very interesting. In Old Testament usage, the two words for blessed are barak, and which means kneel or bow down before, and the second is asher, which means to find the right pathway in the face of false pathways. Those blessed by God have chosen the pathway of God, but as I said, many will refuse God's offer and choose the false pathways of humans. Jeremiah 6.16, thus says the Lord, stand by the roads and look and ask for the ancient paths where the good way is and walk in it and find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. Jeremiah 23, 12, first part of the verse. Therefore, their way shall be to them like slippery paths in the darkness. To see what God would have us to see, we need to view scripture through the lens of God's blessing. And in Revelation, the first thing we see, front and center, is the announcement of the apocalypse. Ap Apocalypsis Iesu Christo, the revelation of Jesus Christ, the revealing. The first thing God calls our attention to is Jesus Christ. Some of this will be review. Some of you may be wondering if we're going to get out of the first three verses of Revelation. It's introducing, introducing still. We guess we will eventually. God first calls our attention to Jesus Christ. Apoca Apocalypsis, Iesu, Christo, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants the things that must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. God reveals to us in his word what is true. We looked at that last week. I've added to that this week. He revealed Revelation, the word apocalypse, means revealing. It's come to me, it's a literary genre, but it, come, it, is, it means literally revealing, the revealing of Jesus Christ, the revealing of anything. God reveals to us what is true. He's our only reliable source. He also reveals to us what is true and what is necessary. We need to stay focused on what God reveals. I would refer again to what Shana has spoken of, the church there in Port-au-Prince. They need to stay focused on what God is saying, on what God has revealed. The voices around us will grow louder and louder. And we've looked at that, that that's not a sign. It's been some weeks back, but we looked at that, that that's not a sign of their impending victory but that they are already defeated. It's a sign of our victory. We need to stay focused on what God reveals. We need to rely on the faithful witness we've been given. John was commissioned to write it down. 
What he wrote down was the word of God, the testimony of Christ, and everything he saw. Next, God next calls our attention to the blessing that he offers. Verse 3, blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. I believe the New Living Translation has this best because it's speaking of, we will see as we progress that this letter is written to the church of Jesus Christ. It's not that it doesn't have meaning to those outside or it doesn't have importance or significance to unbelievers, but it's written to the church. And I believe what this is saying here in reading aloud that the ESV and it had me somewhat confused and I thought, ah, New Living Translation's got it right. That reads it aloud to the church. The church needs to hear this message. So blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy to the church and blessed are those who hear and who keep what is written in it for the time is near. God's intent in Revelation and throughout Scripture is to direct us to his blessing. We see this, this lens that we see these words through to correctly understand and interpret what's written here, the words of this prophecy, the paths of the Lord. There's six more direct references to blessed are in Revelation. You have those in your notes. God offers his blessing to direct our lives to the paths of the Lord, the blessing of God. Very powerful verse, Isaiah 2, uh, verse 3, and many peoples shall come. I mean, just picture the picture our, our Sunday mornings and, and our eagerness and our joy when we see each other. Well, just picture this if you're, if you're walking toward Jerusalem and you're heading toward the temple, the anticipation of what you're going to find, the anticipation of God speaking to us. So with that in mind, listen, and many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk. Amazing. And that we may walk in his paths. Isaiah 26, 8. In the path of your judgments, O Lord. I just love this. In the path of your judgments, O Lord. We wait for you in the path of your judge. That'd be a good one for you guys to hang on and me to hang on to this week. In the path of your judgments, O Lord, we wait for you. Your name and remembrance are the desire of our soul. If we are not reading and hearing the words of this prophecy with the intent of changed lives, we looked at last week what it meant to keep, keeping the words then we will neither understand nor correctly interpret the book. Revelation is for God seekers, not curiosity seekers. Gregory Beale, uh, excellent commentary. John's witness to the heavenly commentary concerning what, Christ, what God has done in Christ is not intended as an apocalyptic curiosity to tantalize the intellect, but to inform Christians about how God wants them to live in the light of recent redemptive history, end quote. We do have specific instructions. This is a little review. I'll just go through this, and, and, uh, but it, it's important that we have in mind what it means to keep the specific instructions as to how we, how we might receive this blessing. See, what I've come to understand, what I have learned is this blessing, you keep this blessing in mind, this reading and hearing and keeping, it because the time is near. Well, all, of course, all the way through our lives, but all the way through this study in Revelation. That's how we understand the words of this prophecy. Within the perspective that the time is near, we are to read the words of this prophecy to the church. And those in the church are to listen to the words of this prophecy. This prophecy is speaking of the entire book of Revelation. With the intention, this is what keeping means. It means other things too. This is part of what keeping means. With the intention of conforming our lives to what we hear. You're not reading God's word. You're, you're looking for a, a, a blessing or whatever it is we call it at times. And, and, and the, you're, you're reading God's word. You, you read it. You're hearing it. You say, I want to hear God. 
and then you're hearing that reading and hearing with the intent that what you read and hear will change your life. That is how you receive this blessing. So how do we keep the words of the prophecy? And I've got in your notes, and we're, we're to the back sheet of your notes now, and uh, the, the, I call it the sidebar. I don't know if it's really, but anyway, uh, sidebar or not. But how do we do that? Well, I wanted us to see. Um, we're going to look at a few ways. Revelation is just packed full of ways that we keep it. We'll see this as we go through the study. So here are a few. One, we live in view of the Christ who is revealed in Scripture. Well, here's a partial picture of the Christ revealed in, uh, in Revelation. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, clothed with a long robe with a golden sash around his chest, the hairs of his head were, were white, like white wool, like snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze refined in a furnace, and his voice was like the roar of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars. From his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun shining in full strength. We're going to see next week, I think in our next section, him coming in the power, in the clouds and great glory. It will be pointed out Christ, his first coming was in humility, his second coming in power and great glory and majesty. So the first thing that we need to do here, I mean, the first thing I have listed, to live in view of that Christ. Now let me give you a statistic. The, the second largest Protestant denomination in the United States is a liberal denomination. They're, thankfully, their numbers have been dwindling over the past decade or more. But there's still about 6 million in this Protestant liberal denomination. They do not hold to the deity of Christ. They do not hold to the, the authority and inspiration of God's word, our sole authority. They do not hold fast the words that we'll see later in Revelation to one way of salvation, Christ alone. So if we want to look at this first one, live in view of the Christ who is revealed in Scripture, don't re live in, re in, in view of the Christ who they reveal. The Christ they reveal is the ones who followed that in Matthew 7, who approached Christ, I believe, verse 21, saying, Lord, Lord, and he said, get away. I never knew you. Don't follow that one. Endure faithfully, second, and do not bear with those who are evil, false apostles. I know your works, your toil, and your patient endurance, and how you cannot bear with those who are evil, but have tested those who call themselves apostles and are not, and found them to be false. So many of our churches, and not just liberal churches, evangelical, what we call evangelical, and what we call fundamental. False teachers in our midst, and we want to be, we prefer being nice than loyal to God. Which leads us to our next one, which is love God first and foremost, never stray from this love. If you tolerate, and we'll see the, the churches, we'll get into this much more as we get the letters to the churches. We looked at it last week, introducing, introducing it. They tolerated false teachers. They tolerated false teaching. They tolerated sexual immorality. They tolerated about anything. I mean, what didn't they tolerate? Is that our first remaining true to our first love? Yes. Let that one burn deeply into our hearts and minds. Love God first and foremost. It's a way of blessing. It's a way that you'll be able uh, to be able to be a blessing to everyone around you. Not the way you choose, the way God outlines for you. The next one, very, very important. Repent for the sins of your church. Don't think for a moment <clears throat> this does not apply today. 
You've heard me say this. You heard me say this last week. Five of the seven churches that Christ chose to evaluate in Revelation for our example, the ones he chose at that time for our example, that we would read this 2,000 years later, five of the seven, 71% were called to repent. Make sure that if there's sin in our church, we deal with sin in our church. It's not just out there somewhere. This is how we keep the words of this prophecy. I have them listed. I think I listed them last week too, all the places to repent. And then the fifth one, do not fear suffering and, and be and do not fear suffering and be faithful unto death. Revelation two ten. No, well one more. <clears throat> Hold fast to the end. Um, this is just a small sampling. You know, sometimes people say, oh, and I, and I've heard people preach like this and because they don't have anything else to say and they say, oh, and there's many more verses. The reason sometimes when you hear that is because they, don't, they, they ran out of material. They don't have anything else to say. Well, this, when I say there's many more, there's many more. We will see as we go through. I had to limit it just for the sake of time. We didn't spend all day here looking. But just we'll see that again and again. Here is how we keep the words of this prophecy. Well, conclusion this morning. Do we really understand the scope <clears throat> of the blessing of God? When God offers to us his blessing, do, we, do we, under, we have the expression on the table? Do we understand what he puts on the table, what God offers to us in Jesus Christ? Do we really understand that? Well, here's one I can answer for all of us. No, we don't. We don't. We do not understand what the blessing that God offers to those who will bow before him and follow him because it is humanly impossible for us to grasp the richness and depth of God's blessing. What God offers to us in Christ is past the outer boundary, is past here. Let me say it again because this is, what, this is what the Greek is going to tell us. It's past the boundaries of the outer boundaries of what we can think or imagine. Now in case you just think I just pulled that out from somewhere, I've got a verse, verse for you. Ephesians 3.20 Now to him who is able to do, and here's the, here are the words, immeasurably more. This is what we're going to come back to that too. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is, at work, that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. I believe the Greek here teaches us, the ever immeasurably more teaches us, that what God is able to do and what God will do for those who know him is infinitely past the furthest boundaries of our minds. Settle in on that one for a minute. Let that one soak in. Past, infinitely past the furthest boundaries of our minds, the things that we can think or even imagine. 1 Corinthians 2.9 But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. We know some things, and they're really good things, and they, 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 they bring stability to our lives, and they fill us with joy and peace and hope but it's the tip of the tip of the tip of the iceberg of God's blessing, what he calls us to. Now, if that isn't enough to throw us to the ground in worship before Yahweh and try to set your mind on this. It was an early morning wow moment for me this past week. Try to set our minds on this, that in and through the saving work of Jesus Christ, that the greatest blessing from God, from, whom, from which all his blessings flow, is that basically God is offering to share himself 
his life, and his world with us forever. I need an amen. Can, can, I, can I hear an amen? An amen, yes. And a wow. And a wow. Just think about, just think about the, the richest, most powerful, most influential person you know saying, hey, I want you to come be with me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do whatever. I'm going to educate whatever. I'm going to take care of you. You share everything I have is yours. Well, how about the infinite, eternal God? This is the blessing. This is the all back in verse three when he tells us to to read and hear and keep. This is this is the blessing he's speaking of. Our problem often is this. We we don't really pursue God's blessing. Now think about it, it's it is it's true. We don't really pursue God's blessing with God in mind. More often than not, we pursue God's blessing with who in mind? With ourselves in mind. It seems that too often we neither read nor hear nor obey his words with infinity and eternity and the unbounded and limitless and glorious nature and character of God in mind. It seems that what many who profess to know our Lord often pursue is not what God has revealed not the things of God that are beyond the boundaries of what we can think or even imagine, but the things of humans, what is actually within our human boundaries. Human thoughts that are lower than God's thoughts as the earth is lower than the heavens. Earthly thinking and human imagining that are confined within and restrained by our frail, fragile, sinful minds and hearts. Um, have you known someone and then they say, hey, have I got a treat for you? And you, you know, you've been visiting and they said, oh, I'm so glad to see you. Hang on, I got to go into the next room and get it, but I've got a treat for you. Well, I've got a treat for you this morning. To finish this morning, I want to share some Old Testament examples of those who found the right pathways of the Lord give us a glimpse and a taste of the blessed life God offers. The life you will find, I will find, when we choose the pathway of the Lord over the false pathways of humans. Psalm 1, 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. See these, just picture these as pilgrims. Picture this as their journal. And they said, this, this is, what, where do these words flow from? Well, they, they flow from the pen of somebody who's walking, who's received the blessing life of God who's walking the blessed life. Psalm 32, 1. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Psalm 34, 8. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Psalm 40, verse 4. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after a lie. Psalm 84, 5. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart. In whose heart are the highways to Zion. Don't you love that? In whose heart is... Are you the highways of Zion in your heart? Psalm 106, 3. Blessed are they who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Psalm 112, 1. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man 
who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments, loves God telling him what to do or telling her what to do. Psalm 119.1, blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong but walk in his ways. Psalm 146.5, blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Proverbs 3.13, blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gets understanding. Proverbs 8.32, and now, O sons, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and do not neglect it. Blessed is the one who listens to me watching daily at my gates, waiting beside my doors, for whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who fails to find me injures himself. All who hate me love death. And very lastly, back to our blessing in Revelation 1, verse 3. God blesses the one who reads the words of this prophecy to the church. And he blesses all who listen to its message and obey what it says. For the time is near. Let's pray. I'm at that place again, Holy Spirit of God. Um, well, just to praise you. Thank you. Your word of truth. You're bringing your message to us this morning. Sink it deeply into our hearts and minds. Change us as only you can. Prepare us for this week. Help us to be the people of God, to walk worthy of the manner with which you have called us. In Jesus' name, amen. On, in your bulletins or number 516, Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed and so happy in Jesus, his child, and forever I am. Would you stand? I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed through His infinite mercy, His child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed through his infinite mercy, his child, and forever I am. Redeemed and so happy in Jesus, no language my rapture can tell. I know that the light of his presence with me doth continually dwell. Redeemed, redeemed. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy, His child and forever I am. I think of my blessed Redeemer. I think of Him all the day long. I sing for I cannot be silent. His love is the theme of my song. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy, His child and forever I am. I know I shall see in His beauty the King 
in whose law I delight, who lovingly guardeth my footsteps and giveth me songs in the night. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Child, we sing that chorus again, pianist. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy, child, and forever I am. Father, we thank you for this day you've given us, this Lord's Day. We thank you for Shania coming and telling about her ministry in Haiti. And we, we pray for that situation. We pray for the people over there. And, and uh, we thank you for Shana and her mm -hmm. willingness to teach others. We thank you for our, sir, our, for our message this morning in Revelation. We just continue to pray for that. Thank you for our pastor and his willingness to teach us each and every day. We pray for uh, our country. We just mm -hmm. pray that as we get closer to our election that we will uh, have peace and we will elect the right man for the job. Thank you for all you do for us. Thank you for the farmers out there working hard each mm -hmm. and every day. We pray that you will keep them safe and bless them and, and mm -hmm. uh, bring them home every night. Uh, guide directors now throughout this Lord's Day. and We thank you that we do know you, Lord. Mm -hmm. We pray for the people that's not here this morning for whatever mm -hmm. reason. And we pray for uh, our prayer request this morning as well. Mm -hmm. We pray for that for each and every one of them. We just pray that you would have them mm -hmm. to handle that. Thank you for all you do for us. Thank you for uh, each and every day and for the, the, each day of life. Mm -hmm. Guide directors now as we leave this building and uh, we'll return this evening. Thank you for everything you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.